Hello and welcome back to the boat shed. My name is John and this boat behind me is Antidote. Today we are working on some fiberglassing overhead, so stick around. If you're new here, we're doing a full restoration of this sailboat out here on my property. Now I'm not a pro boat builder, but I'm an engineer and a sailor with the dream of fixing up this old boat to go sailing around the world. Now I've got a lot of work to do first. And if you've been watching, you'll know that we had to replace an old bulkhead in this boat that was completely rotted out. Now we're just about finished that project. And what I wanna to do today is lay some fiberglass up overhead. We're going to be replacing most of the core on this sailboat, probably all of it. And we started up here at the bow where we had some plywood and balsa. Now, as I replaced it, I put in a couple of different materials because I wanted to get a little bit more strength on the center line where I'm gonna have my windlass mounted and the stay sail fitting also mounting close to here. Now I want to avoid really high stress concentrations where the material changes from kusa to foam, for example. Now I've already staggered these layers because there is two layers in this area to try to distribute these forces. I think what would be a really good idea though is to lay a couple extra layers of glass along that spine on the underside of that deck to further distribute that load since the lower skin of this deck was on the thin side. Now recently when I was tabbing in this new bulkhead, I did put some fairing compound on some areas to avoid using peel ply. So maybe I've shot myself in the foot here a little bit because now I want to laminate more glass to them. So I am going to have to smooth out and grind back some of that fairing compound so I can laminate a couple extra layers and then we'll be back to fairing and finishing. I don't have a center line marked on the inside of the bow here, so we're gonna transfer that using this laser. So I have a center line on the back edge of the bulkhead and I can line this up with where the stem head fitting bolts go and then I've got a pretty good confidence in that line. Now I'll just transfer this along the top edge here and then measure out to where I want this glass to go. So this is the area that we're gonna have to clean up with the sander. So now it's time to get suited up and clean that up. You might be thinking that I didn't get every bit of gel coat off that overhead section. Or maybe I'm the only one. At any rate, I didn't. I'm reasoning that although some of that gel coat comes off almost too easily, a lot of it is super tenacious and well stuck on there. And since the epoxy that we're going to be using to bond this new glass with adheres well to polyester, vinyl ester, epoxy, and just about anything else, I think it's going to stick just fine. Add to that that there is a lot of really nice roughed up clean glass up there for the new laminations to stick to. So I think we're gonna be okay moving forward. We cleaned this area up and got the lines reestablished that we had drawn earlier with the laser. Now, usually here I would lay the glass that I wanna put in down and trace it out, get the shape just right. Of course, working overhead, that's much more difficult to do. So we're gonna use this roll of craft paper for that. And this will work fine. Also, I've used in the past clear polyfilm or like Tyvek house building paper, anything that holds its shape and that you can tape up or tape down, whatever you wanna do, but it'll hold its shape well and doesn't deform and twist. We rough cut this to the widest width that I know I wanna use, which is 21 inches. And then I took it up to the bow. I'm wrapping this from the bulkhead edge up to the forward end of the windlass. So I used some tape here to hold it along the way and then marked out the cuts that I wanna to make to capture the taper at the forward end. All right, let's give you a little bit more details here on how I plan to install this glass. In the original mock-up that I put up, I didn't show the new glass wrapping down onto the bulkhead. So this is what it'll look like with the glass extended down. Since the stay sail tack or attachment point is right above this, I'll put two more layers of glass here to further help distribute this load. And if that's not enough for you, I plan to finish the whole thing off with a new corner bracket under here to help move the pulling forces from the stay sail at the deck level down into this new bulkhead. This is going to be a huge improvement to the strength of this system over what was originally provided on Antidote and all the other liberties. 
there was a three quarter inch plywood bulkhead, you'll remember a huge hole in it that was this really odd shape. The stay sail forces were pulling on that and it was causing it to delaminate, open up, and it just was clearly not up to the task. Back in the shop here, we trimmed this piece down to size and now we are ready to use this template to cut out our glass. Now I do want to use vacuum bag to hold this in place while it cures. There's other ways to do this and we'll talk about that later. But for now, let's get all this glass and all the supplies for the vacuum bagging cut out. Let's get to work. Let's say hi to a couple of the new Patreon crew members that really help keep this channel humming along. If you're interested in some behind the scenes updates and ad free videos, then you can check out the Patreon link in the description down below. The folks whose names are appearing on the screen now go the extra mile to keep this channel moving and I couldn't do it without you. Thanks all so much. Back to the video. It's time now for something a little different. This channel is all about restoring this old boat antidote and making it new again and re refurbishing whatever we can to get this project going. So now I've got something I want to show you and it's a little different than usual. Would you believe this is going in the captain's quarters on antidote? Okay, I didn't think so. Truthfully, this is nothing to do with the Antidote project. This is just a dresser that my wife and I wanna put full extension drawer hinges on so that we can fully extend the drawers and make it accessible. Now, this would actually apply to the boat and maybe to your situation if you're working on your boat because a lot of these old cabinets have these slide mechanisms that don't come out all the way. They rely on a tight fit and they come out maybe three quarters, two thirds of the way out and then you have to leave them, otherwise the drawers will fall to the ground. So the slide like this allows you to do a full extension and use all of the space, so they're super handy. This is just for our own bedroom, but I thought, hey, let's show the audience because maybe they're interested in the work we're doing here. So if this does apply to you, awesome, because you can get these in a marine grade, I'm pretty sure. And if you just don't want to watch this and want to skip ahead, there's probably a marker down there. You can jump ahead, but hang out. We're going to have some fun here. Let me show you what I mean about these drawers. There's a couple different ways that these drawers can be set up. Sometimes the fit of the drawer box is so tight inside the face frame that there's nothing it can do but come straight out and it can't tip down too far. These are built a little bit differently, but they only come out about two thirds to three quarters of the way before there's just a lot of load on the dresser. And so it's hard to access the things in the back. Now the mechanism on this is interesting. It has this rail along the bottom center of each drawer and then that mates to a wooden bracket down the center of each drawer. And then in the corners, there's these little low friction pads. And these are actually just little strips of old, soft, smooth countertop material for mica that have been added. In any case, if you want to try to upgrade the slides on an old dresser or in a cabinet on your boat, perhaps, you need to check to make sure you've got clearance around the drawer box because any of the solutions that I'm aware of require clearance on either the sides or the bottom. And the hinges that go on the bottom, sort of the more modern style, are very nice. I'm not aware if anyone actually makes those in a stainless marine approved version. If you're aware of that, put it in the comments down below. We'd all love to see that. I am pretty sure that these side slides that are full extensions can be obtained in a marine approved salt water ready version. If I'm wrong, you can put that in the comments down below too. I'm sure somebody will. So we're gonna make sure that we have the clearance on the side to fit the new slides in and you need half of an inch per side. So a total of one inch clearance. So there needs to be more than one inch gap from the largest dimension of your drawer box to the smallest inside dimension. 
side to side. We want everything to be pretty close, like within a sixteenth, so that everything is nice and straight. And so far, that's worked out pretty good. Now we actually have the opposite problem here in that we have more than the room we need on the face frame. And because this is actually recessed inside, we have to build some blocks to come out even further. So that's how we're going to size the blocks. Now let's look at how we're going to make them. For this, we are going to use some super simple furring strips. So I've got these one by three boards. I picked these up at the local big box store and these are nothing fancy. I pulled out the straightest, cleanest ones I could find and they are just okay. On this channel, sometimes I get a little bit of heat for being too much of a perfectionist. Not today. <laughs> so these are cheap as they come. I spent $12 on all this wood to make the six drawer standoffs. I just need something that's gonna hold these hinges or rather these slides adequately and we're just holding up socks and underwear here we're not uh, doing anything too heavy duty so this will work just fine so to laminate these together since we need to have a little over an inch and a half and these come out to three quarters of an inch thickness nominally we're going to glue these together so i have a few of these little wood pieces with tape on them and we're going to use these just to block around the wood as we clamp it so that it keeps it all nicely in line for the clamping we have a couple of C clamps. We're basically using all the clamps I've got here in the shop right now. And then I've got a whack of these F clamps, which are great for clamping things with a lot of load. And then we'll roll the glue on with a roller, a cheap disposable roller. And we're gonna use just regular old wood glue today for this project. And I don't want any fasteners in here because I wanna be able to cut these up, plane them down, machine them and not worry about any fasteners inside. So we're just going to clamp these up today and we're using the table, the edge of the table, as our gauge to keep them nice and flat. Let's get going. So while that is drying, we'll get this thing set up and ready to receive the new blocking. Maybe you're wondering why bothering with this dresser to begin with. Well, Bridget and I just happen to really like it. It's also been in the family since before I was born. So my parents got this when they were first married in 1975. It's been in every house I've ever lived in, I think. Well, that's not totally true. It's been in a lot of the houses that we've lived in and we just really like it. It's a cool piece. It just isn't super functional. So we're gonna dress it up no pun intended, and get these slides working better. And then this might be something that we also do on Antidote as we're getting that boat maximized. So we're not gonna need these center rails anymore. So these are just screwed in. So we're gonna take these out. And I don't think we're gonna need any of those center rails. So we're just gonna take them all out and leave them out. With those out of the way, we're not gonna have to worry about leaving the bracket on the bottom of the drawer, and that will actually act as a little extra brace too, so we're happy to leave that in there.
Okay, being honest, have you ever watched glue dry? Okay, well, how about now? <laughs> With all of that finished, the glue ups are ready now to mill down to size. So we broke off all these clamps and freed this piece up from the table, which it was a little reluctant to let go of. Now the beam came out decently straight, not bad for $12 worth of scrap. I want these to be the same width as the slides. Now I have a little bit of liberty here to play around with, but this seems to be good to me. We used a knife and a scraper to initially clean these off, get them relatively square, and then I sent these to the table saw to get a nice finished size. Now I tried to take the same amount off of each side so that I didn't get a lot of warping. So these are ready for the planer now, and this is gonna make pretty quick work, bringing these down to size, the right thickness. So I buck them into the individual lengths as I arrived at the right thickness for each of these pieces. Now the first block I cut out all fancy, but I quickly abandoned this as I realized that it was overkill and barely visible on most of these drawers. So the future ones you'll see are inset. Some of these boxes have these internal supports that are in the way and so I occasionally had to lop off the corners of some of these braces now and then. The fit on this first one looks good. I am going to glue and screw these into place. So we are gonna pre-drill a few holes on these and get these mounted into the drawer boxes. Now here I'm using a thin scrap of plywood as a jig to get the right offset on the slide for the drawer. And I'll use a similar piece of scrap to set the height on the other side of the slide after I pre-drill these and test fit. Well, that was easy, wasn't it? Unfortunately, not quite. The drawer boxes are quite a bit out of square as well as some of the sides of the cabinet. It's all workable, it's just I didn't really account for that when I started. So I've had to make some shims, make some adjustments. It was a bit of a pain in the butt, but we do have that first drawer in and the soft close mechanism works great. Let's finish these things up. Finally, this is all back together with six fully functioning, extending, and soft closing drawers. Once I understood that things were all out of square and wonky by shimming things and cutting things on angles, I was able to get everything back together. It was a little more difficult than I was hoping for, but we had got it all together, and so I'm feeling some renewed energy here. And this is ready to go back into the house so we can enjoy it. Now I'm gonna give it a good clean, a good vacuum, because nobody wants sawdust in your unmentionables, right? And with this off my to-do list, now I'm clear to go back to boat work, so let's see what's happening next there. So welcome back to some of you, and if you'd like to see me try to fit that dresser through the companionway and actually install it on Antidote, go ahead and hit that like button, it's right down there. Appreciate it a lot. We're ready now to get this glass laid up in the bow. Now I've been dreading this, I have to be really honest, because it's a lot of glass, it's overhead, which is never a great or fun way to work, and it's a small cramped space, so I'm envisioning lots of epoxy dripping on me. I've debated trying to do a wet layup, get the glass in place and wet it out overhead. I just think there's really no good way to do this. So anyway, if you have a thought on that, let us know in the comments. Probably by the time you get that comment entered, we'll already be done, but I would love to know for next time. I think this is the hardest lamination I'll have to do as far as working overhead and things like that, but we'll see. If we can get this one behind us, I'm gonna feel pretty good. We're gonna head up now and put the vacuum tape back on. I also have all of my epoxy measured out here in different amounts for the different main layers of glass. And I'll just have to add the resin to those. And I actually sometimes record, well I record a lot of stuff around here obviously, but it might actually be useful if you're doing large amounts of pumping epoxy to record yourself so you can make sure you know exactly how many you have. So if someone runs in and asks you a question, hey John, where's the remote for the TV? 
then you can actually stop what you're doing, help them, and then still remember how many pumps you have. So anyway, let's get going. There were a few leaks in the bag initially. One of them I thought was coming from the air valve and after completely covering it in tape, I realized it was just a small pinhole right next to it. The bag initially pulled down to about 15 inches of mercury, not too bad. And after massaging all of the tape around the edge of the bag, I was able to get it down to 20 inches of mercury. So that's pretty good. It's been over 24 hours and the leftovers look rock solid. So let's pull that bag off and see what we've got. That looks pretty good to me. We'll know more when we pull the peel ply off a little bit later. If you're new to the channel and would like to get caught up from the very beginning, there's a playlist for you here and a subscribe button is right over there. Thanks for watching. See you next time. It was a little bit more hassly than I like, but is that a word? What are you doing? Uh, I am literally watching glue dry. Yeah, it's not there yet. <laughs>